In this video, we're going to learn how to dynamically allocate a 2D array in C. So we can declare a 2D array of ints on the stack like this, int array, three, and three. And this will declare a 2D array with three rows and three columns. And we could initialize it like this, one, two, three, as the first row, four, five, six, as the second row, and seven, eight, nine, as the third row. So we can think of a 2D array as being an array of arrays where each row in the 2D array is really its own one dimensional array. So for example, if we have array at index one, we would say this decays to a pointer to this array here in the 2D array. So this will give us the pointer to the second array in our 2D array. Then if I have index two here, we would get value six. So when creating a 2D array with dynamic memory allocation, we're going to dynamically allocate space for each individual row in our 2D array. So a series of one dimensional arrays. And we're also going to have an array of pointers to those one dimensional arrays. And that's how we'll have our array of arrays. So to dynamically allocate memory, we have to use malloc or calloc. So I'm going to include stdlib.h so I can use those functions. I'm going to use malloc. So first, let's dynamically allocate space for a one-dimensional array of ints. We'll have int star array zero is equal to malloc size of int times three. So malloc is going to allocate enough space to store three int values because we're passing as an argument to malloc size of int multiplied by three. The number of bytes that it takes to store an int multiplied by three. Malloc is going to return a memory address for that block of memory. Now array zero is a pointer to an int so it can store a memory address. It's gonna store the memory address of the first int in that block of memory. So right now we have a single one dimensional array of ints that we've dynamically allocated space for. Now we could allocate space for additional one dimensional arrays of ints. So we'll copy this and we'll paste it and we'll have array one and array two. So now we've allocated space for three arrays of ints and array zero, array one and array two are gonna store the pointers to these blocks of memory on the heap that are each capable of storing three ints. Now to make this a multi-dimensional 2D array, what we're going to have is an array of not ints, but pointers to ints. So an array of pointers to these memory addresses here that malloc is returning. So we're gonna have int star star array, where array is a pointer to, a pointer to an int. And we're going to allocate space for an array of pointers to ints, which is what array zero, array one, and array two are. So we'll have is equal to malloc size of, not an int, but a pointer to an int, multiplied by three. So array is a pointer to an array that is capable of storing pointers to ints. In other words, pointers to one dimensional arrays or rows of data that are also on the heap. So let's just comment out this array here. So that way we're not using the same name twice. Then we'll initialize the elements of this array to point to the three one dimensional arrays. So what we'll have is array at index zero is going to be assigned the memory address that array zero is storing. Array at index one is going to store the memory address that array one is storing. And array at index two is going to store the memory address that array two is storing. So right now we can actually access array as a 2D array. So for example, I could say array at index one. Now array is a pointer to a pointer to an int. It's pointing to a block of memory that contains an array of pointers to ints, an array 
of pointers to these arrays here. So array at index one is giving me a pointer to this array here that array one is pointing to. Then if I say index two here, I'm going to get the third element in that array that array one is pointing to. So we could set that to five. Then I could print it out. So I could have printf array at index one, index two is equal to percent D backslash N and we'll output array at index one at index two. And if we save, compile and run the program, we do get the value five. So it is working. We can right now treat array like a 2D array with this syntax here. Now, what we're doing right now is kind of redundant. These mallocs are giving us memory addresses for these one dimensional arrays. And we're storing that memory address in these pointer variables here. All we're doing here is copying those memory addresses to the array of pointers to ints that array is pointing to that we dynamically allocated in order to have a pointer to each row. So we can actually reduce this here. We'll actually just do the mallocs right here. And we'll assign the memory address that malloc returns to each array element directly rather than using a variable temporarily. So if we save, compile, and run our program, the 2D array itself is going to work the exact same way as before. Now we can still clean up some redundancy here though, because we have the same call to malloc essentially three times because our rows have the same length. We could actually just put this in a loop. So we'll have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus. So i is gonna go from zero to one to two. And then in the body of the for loop, we'll have array at index i is equal to malloc, and we'll have the call to malloc here. So size of int times three. So this loop is basically a rolled up version of what we're doing here. We're going to initialize each array index using a call to malloc. Only now we have a counter variable that's gonna go from zero to one to two, instead of setting each index individually with individual statements. So we can delete this, save, compile, and run our program. And we get the same result as before. And the 2D array is working the same as before. Now, I think that 2D arrays like this are pretty difficult to wrap our heads around. The way that they're stored in memory is also different than a 2D array that's declared on the stack. So let's go over how that works. With our dynamically allocated 2D array, we can visualize it like this with array being a pointer to an array of pointers. And array at index zero is gonna be a pointer to an array of ints, and we could store one, two, three there. Array at index one is going to be a pointer to an array of ints, and we could store four, five, six there, and so on with array at index two. We could also visualize it like this in a bit of a tree structure here, if that helps. Now, the way it's laid out in memory is pretty interesting. So in memory, it's going to look like this. And I know it's complicated, but that's how it looks. So array is going to be a pointer to, a pointer to an int. So it's gonna be stored at some address in memory. And what it's going to store itself is the memory address for an array of pointers to ints. That's this array here. So when we do the call to malloc, where we have size of int star times three, we're allocating space for this array here. And that array is gonna be an array of pointers to ints. And here, each index in this array is gonna store the memory address of an array of ints. So our three other calls to malloc are allocating space for those arrays of ints. So here we have the first array of ints in memory and the first index in this array of pointers to ints is gonna store the memory address of the first element in that array of ints. 
Then we have our next array of ints, which is our next row in the 2D array. And the memory address of the first element in that array is going to be stored in the second element of our array of pointers to ints. And then so on with the third row. So the third row is going to be stored at a certain place in memory. And the memory address of the first element in this array is going to be stored in the third element of our array of pointers to ints. So all array really is, is a pointer to this array of pointers to ints here. And when we have something like array at index one, what we're doing is accessing this memory address here stored at the second index in that array that array is pointing to. Then when we have say index two here, we're now accessing the third element in this array here that array at index one is pointing to. So it stores, let's say memory address 80. That means the first element of this 1D array is going to be at memory address 80. And then we have index two, we're going to access this element here at the third index in that array. So that's how things work with a dynamically allocated 2D array. Altogether, we have four pointers and we have nine ints. With a 2D array on the stack, it's different. So if we declare a 2D array of ints on the stack with three rows and three columns, like this one here, we're only gonna have nine ints in memory. Each row in the 2D array is stored contiguously in memory, one after the other. So it ends up looking like this, with this block of nine ints in memory, where the first three ints make up the first row of the 2D array, the next three ints make up the next row of the 2D array, and then the next three ints make up the final row of the 2D array. So this has one important consequence. It's actually going to take up more memory to store our dynamically allocated 2D array compared to this 2D array on the stack, because the 2D array on the stack only needs nine ints to be stored. But the dynamically allocated 2D array has nine ints as well as four pointers. Now on my machine, it's four bytes to store an int and eight bytes to store a pointer. So we can break it down like this. The 2D array on the stack has nine ints stored in memory. So nine times four bytes per int gives us 36 bytes. But in the case of the 2D array with dynamic memory allocation, we have four pointers. We have the one pointer to a pointer to an int, that's going to take up eight bytes. Then we have the three pointers to ints, which is going to be three times eight bytes gives us 24 bytes. And then we have those nine ints that are broken down into three 1D arrays of three ints each. So three times three times four gives us 36 bytes. So altogether we have eight plus 24 plus 36 bytes gives us 68 bytes to store the dynamically allocated 2D array on the heap compared to 36 bytes on the stack. So that is a non-trivial difference. So in terms of how to free the dynamically allocated memory for this 2D array, we're going to free the memory for each individual row. Then we're going to free the memory for this array of pointers to ints. So let's actually write a loop to help us. We're gonna have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, and we're going to free the memory for each individual row by freeing the array at index i. Then we're going to free the array of pointers to ints with free array. And that will free the memory for the dynamically allocated 2D array. Now, if we wanted to increase the number of rows in our array, we would wanna increase this number here, this number here, and this number here. If we wanted to increase the number of columns in our 2D array, we would wanna increase this number here. We could have variables, rows and columns for these numbers. So we could have int 
rows is equal to five. Then we could put rows here and rows here and here. And we could have a variable int columns is equal to five. And we could put columns here. And now it's a bit more dynamic in the sense that we can modify rows and columns and modify the number of rows and columns in our 2D array. We could get these values for rows and columns from user input, for example, and then the size of our 2D array would be adjusted at runtime when the program is executing. So there's a lot more we can do with dynamically allocated 2D arrays. There's even more ways that we could actually allocate memory for 2D arrays as well but I'll cover those topics in a future video. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.